What's up guys? So for those of you who've been subscribed to me pre-2019, you know that in 2018, every month I had a fuckboy of the month video. Um, and so for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, basically every month I had one video dedicated to a guy who was like a total loser, or jerk, or whatever, who wasted my time, essentially. Whether it was briefly dating, or who I met at a bar, or who I, you know, met on an app. I stopped doing that theme because I felt like I was kind of harping on, even though I was trying to make those stories funny by talking about them and looking back at them, I felt like I was harping on negativity from the past with guys who I really shouldn't be thinking about at all at this point. So I stopped doing that theme. But I have a, a new story that um, relates back to one of these fuckboys. So I wanted to share this with you. So the other day, I was just minding my own business and my old coworker from the previous company where I worked, the last company where I worked, she reaches out to me and she says, hey, you got this email. Uh, I guess it was forwarded to her since I don't work at that company anymore. And she said, I, I thought you should see it. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. I wonder what email this is, right? I open it up and as soon as I see the header and who it's from, I'm like, it's from Mason. The guy I called Mason, if you remember that video, if you haven't seen it, you can check it out on my YouTube channel. I don't want to go through the whole story, but the short version is that this is the only guy who really has, has broken my heart because it's the only guy that I've ever had a real connection with. Um, even though we weren't in a relationship, we weren't boyfriends, it was a long lasting, intimate connection. Um, and essentially, over a year after we had this connection, I found out that the whole time I was his affair, essentially, and that he was married to a guy in another state. So this is the only guy that's ever really like traumatized me. All the other fuck boys, you know, they were obnoxious. It pissed me off for like a week or two, but this guy, like this messed with my head for years. Now, mind you, this is five years later, this, that, since I've spoken to him that this email is coming through. The email basically said, hey, just want you to know I've thought about you over the years and I'm still sorry for how I handle things. And, you know, I Googled you and I see that you're doing really well professionally and I'm really happy to see that. And, you know, you don't have to respond to this message, but I, I just wanted to let you know that I'm thinking of you and, and only want the best for you, blah, 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 blah. So I'm just stunned for various reasons. The biggest thing for me is like, you emailed my work email where I don't even work anymore. So first I'm just humiliated that my, co my old coworker saw a personal email and, you know, knowing young girls in their 20s, I wouldn't be surprised if she sent it around to a few coworkers like, oh, look at this email that our old coworker got. So I'm just embarrassed by that. Second, I'm like the audacity of somebody to contact you at a professional, professional email or professional contact method. Like it's one thing to fuck with my heart. It's a whole other thing to potentially fuck with my cash flow. That totally rubbed me the wrong way. And the thing is like, he has my phone number. It's not like when we had our connection, we were using the telegraph or like, you know, pigeons, male pigeons to communicate. Like you can't just send this via text. Even my personal email, I'm pretty sure he had. And if he somehow found my work email, which I, I still don't get how he even found that because I Googled it and it didn't even come up. So I don't know how he found it, but I just feel like if you could find that, you can't just find my personal email. We still have my phone number. It doesn't make sense to me. So then I reread the message to assess like how genuine it was. It annoyed me that line about, um, you know, you don't have to message me back. I'm like, oh, thank, thanks for the permission that now I know that I don't have to respond. Like, Then my next thought was maybe he's now split up with his partner. And so he's kind of craving a connection with, you know, the guy he kind of had an affair with who didn't even know the whole time. I didn't know that I was in an affair the whole time. But then I did my little Facebook research and discovered that they are still together and it's, they've been together for like 20 years. So I'm like, why are you sending me this? Five years later, I'm now at a point where I really do believe just based on experience that time heals all wounds. I remember the first year or so after this happened, when something would remind me of him, it would totally trigger me and I would get sad and I would obsess over it and go back into this like, this mode of, of just anxiety and sadness, like why did somebody do this to me and all this stuff. Now it's been years and I have to tell you, getting this email, I didn't feel anything. It wasn't like, oh, this is so nice, nor did it bring back any feelings about him. So it's just so strange to me that in the moment, somebody could fuck things up 
and ruin a connection and not seem to have remorse about it. But five years later, suddenly now you're emotional about it. Now you're like nostalgic. And so I don't know how authentic a message like that could be. And I also feel like for somebody to not have the self-awareness that it's inappropriate to contact you through like your work shows that it probably is a manipulative tool here and that they just want the satisfaction of an answer to know that like you're still thinking of them potentially. So obviously I didn't respond. Even if it was my personal email or my personal phone number, I think I probably would have blocked him just because it's been so long that you're not in my life anymore. And I, I, the best thing I got out of that situation and the best thing I've gotten out of every fuck boy I've encountered is, is a learning experience of like, this is not somebody I want in my life. This isn't, I don't want somebody to affect me like this. So then I told my close friend about this, the only person who knows the ins and outs of what I experienced with this guy because she was my friend back then. It was so interesting because she said this is a typical man thing to do. That apparently this is what men do. They circle back years later or months later and try to like manipulate you back into feeling something for them. And I had no idea that this is a thing that men do because this is the only guy I've ever had a real long-term connection with. So I'm curious if you guys have ever had something like this happen to you.